Good evening. Welcome to Gulf Coast October. My name is Dawn. Today's project incorporates these calaveras and an owl. This is a Dia de los Muertos altar offering art project DIY Dollar Tree edition. So welcome. Although this season in general has an air about it, Dia de los Muertos is not Halloween. It's not Samhain, and it's not Santa Muerte. These images are known as sugar skulls, but more specifically, they represent La Catrina and El Catrin. And I first learned about La Catrina when somebody referred to me as La Catrina because of my fascination with things that seem macabre to people that don't understand, as well as how I would mix my junky jewelry with my fancy jewelry. This was a feather from another project, but somehow it ended up on the nose of the owl. And I had a few of these kind of like things that happened when I was doing this, like the owl hooting. This little skull right here is why I painted these black first. They could be all different kinds of colors representing your loved ones or traditional like purple for in mourning and the fire orange yellow for marigolds. Love the color black onyx black. It represents protection. And sometimes when I start painting, I just go, 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 but it took me a long time to do this video. But back to the word worship, it used to just mean honoring reverence. We say your honor in some countries, they say your worship. As culture changes, language means different things. And now worship really only means about God, but traditionally it didn't. And outside of the United States, different terms mean different things. I do feel we tend to be ignorant to this. With that in mind, this is about respecting and honoring those that have departed before us, the dearly departed, the faithfully departed. Does it mean that if the person that departed was not considered a Catholic or a Christian, that they can't be honored and remembered? Of course they can be. Is Dia de los Muertos okay with the Catholic Church? Of course it is. It's celebrating the memory of family. It's celebrated, you know, during All Saints Day, which is November 1st, and All Souls Day, which is November 2nd. It's the same days, but this stands alone, and I wish so bad I could have partaken in this growing up. It would have helped me so much with my need and my longing to connect with my loved ones that departed. It would have helped me with trauma. When I partake in these things, I want to be as respectful as possible. Fall is in the air. It's that time of the year. I get excited this time of the year because I'm sensitive to the thinning of the veil, which is why I'm so grateful that I can easily access these items. Yes, this is from China. These are made in China, but there are a lot of people in our community that celebrate Dia de los Muertos, and that's probably one of the reasons why I feel so comfortable about it, and I'm grateful that I can have these options in my community. Dia de Muertos is a spiritual purpose. We're encouraged to pray for our loved ones who have passed. It's a time to get together with family, and together you can go clean up the cemetery. You can clean up your loved one's resting sites. It feels good to make our loved one's favorite dish again. I do this. See how sacred these little skulls are? We have to be careful. I know how sensitive I am when people come to Mardi Gras and appropriate its Catholic holiday. They come to pee everywhere. That is not what Mardi Gras is about. Just like these little skulls, Halloween is not Dia de los Muertos. Something personally I do with my friend Charlie is he used to love the brisk Libs and Iced Tea and I'll bring a bottle out there and I'll open it and pour like half of it on the grave and I'll close it and leave half of it there on his tombstone and it's just me bringing my buddy a drink, you know, sometimes I take a sip. I miss my friend. I also bring bird seeds out there for the crows and the other birds because he loved wildlife. Charlie was my best friend. He died in 2017. We used to go to Captain D's all the time because he loved it. And you know how they have the little sauce cups? Okay, so after Charlie passed, one day I was at the cemetery, and there was this crow, and he had a tartar sauce cup in his mouth. He had eaten all the leftover sauce out of it and dropped it. I went over and got it, and I put it on Charlie's tombstone. I was convinced this bird was Charlie. Another time, I was at the cemetery, and I was crying to Charlie because all my friends were telling me about how they were seeing all these beautiful butterflies, and he knew it was their loved ones. And I cried, and I thought, Charlie, why won't you come to me as a butterfly? I'm not kidding. This raggedy-ass moth came flying sideways. <laughs> like, if a moth could have a flat tire, that was this moth. And he landed on my pants, and he just stayed there for like, you know, 20, 30 minutes. I just didn't want to move. I didn't want him to fly away. And then when he did, you know, he went on his way. And I was like, of course, Charlie came through to me as a moth. I loved it. It made me feel so close to my friend, even though he's gone. I've always been able to connect with the spirits on the other side this way. And I've always been told that it was wrong and it was evil and it was bad. 
And then one day a counselor said, honey, you, you, you celebrate All Souls Day, right? And I was like, what is that? And I learned about it and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm allowed to do this. So that became a requirement. I did not want to be part of a church that did not allow me to celebrate this. I'm sorry about my speech. Uh, half of my mouth on the inside is paralyzed. And some days it's hard to talk, but I do it anyway. Okay, anyways, that out of the way. But it became a requirement for me that I wanted to be able to celebrate this. Because all the like non-denominational churches and Baptist churches and all this, no offense, but they considered all that stuff bad and evil and wicked. And that just broke my heart because I needed to be able to do this. I needed to be allowed to know that I really was having these moments where I felt like my loved ones were connecting to me. And I had the urge to want to leave offerings and buy gifts for and talk to and, and just, you know, honor my loved ones that were passed by understanding this is real. There really are people that celebrate specific family members during this time of the year. And this is why I personally had to leave my own culture to find myself. I am a human. A lot of the communities across the map where I'm from celebrate Catholic traditions like go big or go home, but we do this with everything. Other than the outsiders coming in to party, it felt like traditions stayed where they were within the tradition. When I left the coast, I noticed these things get all melded together and jumbled up more. A lot of us had statues in our yards. The Stella Maris, or the Our Lady of the Sea statues, were in many people's front yards. But when I got to go to houses with my grandmother, she was a realtor, and I could see these personal altars with incense and statues, I wanted to be able to do that. I remember a personal altar, and the lady that lived there was telling me the photos was of her papa. My own papa had just passed away. I went home and I tried to make this. I tried to replicate it. These special areas of people's houses had the energy of Christmas and Mardi Gras, I was picking up on that energy of sacredness that brings us home. And speaking of homesick memories, this color right here, this orange red color, I'm incorporating this very specifically. It's the color of the house I grew up in. These are going to go on my altar to my Papa Frank this year. Every year, this time of the year, I get real sensitive and I start thinking about usually a different specific loved one. It's like, this is the year of Papa Art. This is the year of Grandma Gwen. Well, let me tell you guys, this is the year of Papa Frank, so this has to be Grandma Gwen. I realize these skulls are Katrina and Katrine, or they're the sugar skulls, you know, representing the sweetness of life. Some of these sugar skulls represent individual loved ones that have passed. These altars are called ofrendas. Right now, these are going on an altar that I'm making for my Papa Frank and Grandma Gwen, along with everybody else. I'm going to show you the altar toward the end of the video. But Papa Frank has been coming through so much lately, and I can't believe I missed it. Like, I named my rat Frank, I have a counselor named Frank, I made a buddy on YouTube named Frank, a character in my book is named Frank, I mean, it's just Frank, Frank, Frank. It took multiple seasons for me to catch this. But yes, Papa, I'm listening. Especially after my auntie gave me in on some personal insight about the family to let me know Papa did love me. You know how it is towards the end of life. Sometimes family members are very protective and don't let anybody near. Not to mention I was very wild and uncivilized and this was just not acceptable in my southern upbringing. Judgment, yes, but I brought some of it on myself. Papa, for that I'm sorry. And here I offer you a guide. Here is your owl. I almost forgot, when I was using a blow dryer to dry these, the skulls did not do this, but the, the hole under the bottom of the owl, when the blow dryer hit it, it made a sound just like an owl. If you want to add things to an altar to honor your family members, your loved ones that have passed over, you can do the male and female skulls. It's the Katrina Katrina. And the, La Katrina is something, uh, I'll leave a link to learn about that if you want to. Marigolds are traditional and they're wonderful and they smell very nice and they have that pop of color. It's like a light lighting the way. Another is Papa Avocado. It's the paper flags. You can make your own. You could kind of do like when you make a paper snowflake. The main things is there's holes in the flags so the spirits can come through. And of course, Bread of the Dead. I usually try to say these things in Spanish, but in Spanish is Pan de Muerto, which is great. It's, that's what it is. But I just love that in English it rhymes. Bread of the Dead. <laughs> I can't remember if salt is purification or protection, but that's why the skulls are painted black, because black is the color of protection. And of course, don't forget a glass of water. Real quick, I'm gonna plug this thing called Lacuna. There's some links in the description. Um, it's a prison program for women in Mexico. They make toys to help support their own family. So even in prison, they're working their butts off. Okay, let me tell you about this. This is my altar. That's my Papa Frank. That's his sister, Mary. That's the house I grew up in, the one that's that orange color. And that's my grandma, Gwen. Also the house, the orange color. That was on the same day back in 1999, I think. 
Uh, but that's the grandparents that have come through to me very strong this year. That little rock is a fossil that was Charlie's. That butterfly represents my grandmother Mary. That fossil belonged to my papa that the butterfly is on. My papa Tom, a different one, he's also come through to me. And then I also have things I'm going to put out that represent papa art and all my other family members. And I need to get some marigolds and some other things. But as the season progresses and moves on, you know, the altar is going to change a little bit. Hey, don't go anywhere. Listen to the sound that it makes when I was blow drying the owl. Wow.